Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this Malifaux mobile toolkit. I thought it was about time that I painted something Malifaux, so here you go. If you would like to see the build video for this model, there's a link in the description and a card in the upper right of the screen now. Let's get started. The model was primed black. I used Steinal Res Black Primer. I then airbrushed the entire model with Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal. Vallejo Model Air paints are designed to be thin enough for airbrushing right out of the bottle, but I still thinned this just a tiny bit to be sure. It only took a few seconds to get a nice smooth coat. You could of course do this with a hand brush, but airbrushing eliminates the chance of brush strokes. I get around the annoyance of having to clean the airbrush after doing a couple of seconds work by airbrushing a bunch of things all at once, as evidenced by my dirty hands. I then apply a wash of army paint at dark tone. This was thinned roughly 70% dark tone and 30% water. As you can see, I applied it fairly heavily to the entirety of the model, with a focus on all the joints and mounting points for the arms and legs. Areas I think would naturally get more dirty and also have more shadow. Once that's dry, I take the Model Air Gunmetal again and dry brush it onto the model, using my contour brush. I did a quick tips video about this brush recently, so if you would like to know more about it, there's a link in the description and a card in the upper right of the screen now. I was trying to focus this dry brushing mostly on the upper surfaces of the model, trying to keep the darkened area to the gaps and recesses. I think I might have gone a little bit too far with this, so it looks a little bit cleaner than I was going for, but it doesn't look bad. Next, I dry brush Vallejo Model Air Steel, just to add a little bit of highlighting to the metallic colour. I want this almost entirely on the upper surfaces of the model where the light might be a little bit brighter, and I apply it fairly lightly. It's preferable to do this in very light layers and build up to where you're happy with it, rather than one overly heavy layer. It just makes it so you don't have to fix it if you're not happy with it. It's kind of subtle, but this also helps to bring out some of the edges and details on the model. I spent some time pondering on what colour I wanted to use as an accent before I settled on model colour royal blue. I suppose I could have left the entire thing silver, but I thought it would look more interesting if some of the parts were a different, non-metallic colour. Blue in this case. I try to apply this colour neatly. It will be a pain in the arse to fix any mistakes I make on the metallic colours. The areas I chose to paint blue were kind of random. There's certainly no hint that they should be different colours from Malifaux's box art or anything like that. They want you to use your own creativity. And so do I. The blue is mostly applied to the covers of tool bits. Maybe we can say that they are removable covers, or something like that. Really, they're just where I thought it would look good to have blue. I then mix the royal blue roughly 50-50 with Vallejo model colour Deep Sky Blue to do some highlighting. I'm mostly applying this to the sharp edges around anything that's painted blue. When doing this kind of thing I like to try and paint with the side of the brush, rather than the tip, if that makes sense. It's easier to paint a straight line along an edge if you run the side of the brush along that edge, rather than trying to trace the tip of the brush along the edge. That said, in some parts I still applied this a little bit messily. That's okay, it should look fine at a distance and it's probably a little bit more natural looking. If you're really not happy with any of the edges, don't be afraid to go over them with the base colour again to neaten up your highlights. You'll notice that some numpty forgot to paint the raised central part on the rear. I fixed it so that it's more consistent with the front of the model, and I feel it looks much better that way. Then I add a wash of Army Painter Blue Tone ink to, unsurprisingly, the blue areas. Who'd have thunk it? This is just to add a little bit of depth and variation to the colour. This is undiluted and straight out of the bottle. Then, to try and add a bit of interest, I paint some Model Air Steel into the two slots in the front of the model. It was kind of tricky to get the paint in there neatly, and there is a little bit of spill around the edges, but that was easy enough to fix. I just used the same fine brush to touch up the surrounding areas with blue. Running the side of the brush over the area is a good way to paint the central bar bit without getting blue where I don't want it. It ended up looking much neater. Then, into those gaps I put some Army Painter Red Tone ink. It's not quite as bright as I was hoping it would be, but I feel like it gives the model a look of some kind of dull red light or glow being inside the robot. It's just something to add a little bit of interest and variation to the model, and break up the blue a little bit. I then applied a coat of Minotaur Gloss Varnish, though of course you can use any gloss varnish that you like. This is to protect the acrylic paints from the coming enamels. 
When the gloss is dry, I apply AK Interactive Track Wash to the tr well, not to the tracks, there are none, but I thought it would look pretty good on the drill. I gave it another coat off camera to make it look a little bit more solid than it appears here. I also apply this around the drill, because those areas would probably get a lot of whatever's making the drill go this colour on them too. I also add it to the feet, because we can assume that they would also get dirty during drilling. I then use AK Interactive Dark Brown Wash for green vehicles. This is obviously not a green vehicle, but what are you going to do about it, huh? That's right. It should work just fine for this purpose anyway. I add it to the gaps, recesses, joints and pivot points and all the areas I think should look kind of dirty and grimy. I applied a lot of this to the hoses that run down to the feet. I'm pretty messy with this which is fine. The next step is to use a clean brush with clean thinner on it to remove the unwanted spots of the dark brown wash. Track wash too, though I didn't remove much of that. Using enamels is nice for this kind of thing. I spent a fair bit of time removing and reapplying the weathering colours I used until I was satisfied with it. I also applied some AK Interactive Dark Streaking Grime to the hose things running down to the feet. Eventually I came to a point where I was satisfied with it enough to consider this model complete. Now it needs a base. I wanted something a little bit more interesting than the plain base that the model comes with, but I was too lazy to build something myself, so I'm using this Pipeworks base from MicroArt Studio. I got this from their Kickstarter a few years ago, but I'm pretty sure that you can buy it from their site now. Like the model itself, this was primed black with Steinal Res Primer. I base coated the floor parts with Vallejo model colour black grey. I'm avoiding the pipes, but I'm not too worried if I do get some grey on them. I also painted this colour around the rim of the base, though this is an insert and not the entire base, this is just in case it's visible. I then apply a dry brushing with Vallejo model colour London Grey. I went a bit heavier with this than I was intending to do, but I think it worked out well enough. I then take the same colour and use a fine brush to do some edge highlighting on whatever edges I could find. I also use it to hit the bolt heads, and the opening where one bolt seems to be missing. Nothing especially tricky about this. I then paint the pipes. On these I use Vallejo model colour red. I mistakenly grabbed this colour instead of hull red, but I think this colour actually worked out pretty well. Obviously I'm trying to be kind of neat with this because I would rather not have to go back and fix mistakes, though that shouldn't be too hard to do. Mistakes could also be hidden with weathering. I then dry brushed model colour vermilion over the top of this. I wasn't entirely satisfied with it, mostly because I didn't really want the base to be too colourful compared with the model itself, but I figured I might just leave this and then darken it down later. I figured I should keep the painting style consistent with the model and the rest of the base, so I took a fine brush and added some edge highlights using model colour scarlet. This is pretty simple, but it should add a nice bit of depth to the model. I apply this along the top of the pipes too. This is a little bit less defined than the other bits of highlighting, but I feel like it adds a little bit of something. I felt like maybe that was enough colour, so I apply a wash of Army Painter Dark Tone just to darken everything down a bit and add some shadow. And then I add a coat of Minotaur Gloss Varnish. Like with the Mobile Toolkit, this is to protect the acrylic layers from the coming enamels. I then apply the AK Interactive Dark Brown Enamel Wash for green vehicles around the bolt heads and gaps and things like that. Not a lot to say about this, it's really just to add a little bit more of a dirty appearance and some depth. I then clean some of it off with a clean brush and clean thinner. I actually removed a fair bit of this wash. Then I figured it might be interesting to add some rust. For this I used AK Interactive Light Rust Wash, mostly on the pipes. I messed around with it a fair bit, removing and reapplying little bits here and there. Not just to the pipes, but also on the grey areas too. Eventually I was satisfied and applied another coat of Minotaur Gloss Varnish. Then it occurred to me that the slots on the drain cover thing needed to be a little bit darker so they would have more of the illusion of depth. So I quickly added a little bit of undiluted army painter dark tone in there. Nothing too challenging. Then I apply AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish to both the model and the base and when that's dry it's time to join them both together. I just use super glue and glue the model directly to the base. I would have really preferred to pin this, but there's just no way I could see that I could get a pin into those legs. Also I would have liked to get the model to stand more centrally on the base, 
There's going to be a little bit of overhang at the rear, which I didn't really want, but I think this was the most appealing way to get it to stand on the base. I didn't want to put his feet up on the pipes. Those are my good pipes, and I don't want them dirtied by robo feet. This should be fine anyway, as long as I'm not too rough with the model. The reason I applied the matte varnish before joining the model to the base was just to make it a bit easier to get the matte into all of the little spaces I would need it. When they're joined together, I apply a little bit more ultra matte just in case I missed anything and to hide any shine caused by any errant superglue. Then I join the model and base insert to the actual base. Doing it this way means I don't have to touch up the base at all and it looks very nice and neat. There is a small gap there, but that's okay. I'm not really worried about it. And that's the Malifaux Mobile Toolkit complete. It's now ready to go and do whatever it is this little critter does. Drilling and stabbing, I suppose. I'm pretty happy with the result I've got here. It's fairly simple and that's not a bad thing. It looks good and you don't need to use a whole lot of colours to do that. I realise I painted this in a shiny metallic colour and then killed all the shine with the matte varnish, but I think that looks cool. It makes the model look kind of dusty and used. It's not filthy, or not that filthy, and the base would suggest that this is an inside robot, but it has still managed to get slightly dusty and fairly dirty. I did consider adding some gloss varnish into the slots on the front of the model. I still might do that, but I'm not sure. It probably won't make a huge difference anyway. Either way, I think it looks good and I rather enjoyed the process of painting this model. From time to time, it's nice to do something that isn't a tank or an infantry figure. As they say, variety is the spice of life. That said, next time it will be back to tanks. As always, there's a list of colours that I've used on this model in the description below. Obviously you're free and encouraged to use whatever colours you like on your own mobile toolkit. And if you have done one of your own, I would love to see it. Okay, I think that might be enough rambling from me. What do you think of this model and how I painted it? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't done so already, feel free to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on social media and watch me live stream on Twitch. And if you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. Links to all of those things are in the description below. I shall return soon, so until then, happy painting and thanks for watching. Farewell.